Early August 1944, south of Cannes, northwestern France. After D-Day, it took Allied troops a month to capture the French city of Cannes, despite their initial estimate of a few days. By the 7th of August, the Germans had counter-attacked south of Cannes and Mortain, but had been repulsed by American troops under General Patton. To exploit the weakened enemy situation, the Allied High Command devised a plan to encircle both the German 7th Army and 5th Panzer Army in an attempt to capture over 100,000 German troops. While the Allied troops prepared to move out from Khan towards Falaise, the dejected Germans moved back towards Argentan in the east, away from Patton's forces of Mortain. On August the 9th, with French and American troops advancing north towards Argentan from Le Mans, General Montgomery launched his offensive from Khan south towards Falaise with Canadian, Polish and British troops. Near Falaise, a contingent of troops from the German 7th Army wait and prepare positions, protecting a small Würzburg radar installation. These radar units were used to direct German fighter aircraft toward attacking Allied bombers. Advancing along the Bocage, the hedgerow bordered roads in northwestern France. The Allied convoy finally make contact with the German forces and the battle begins. Not only did the German troops have to contend with the Allied ground forces, but also near continual airstrikes from American and British aircraft. Throughout the two-week confrontation in the Falaise area, the Luftwaffe was relatively absent, and so the Allies enjoyed almost total air superiority. alone, the American 19th Tactical Air Command destroyed or damaged over 1,000 vehicles, 45 tanks and 12 locomotives. Throughout the fighting in France after D-Day, French resistant fighters would often assist the Allied troops whenever and wherever they could. Being prepared for the Allies gives the Germans an advantage despite the air attacks. And as they counterattack with ground troops and armour, the Allied troops are forced to withdraw.
Unfortunately, even while France was being liberated by the Allies, many French resistance fighters were still being captured by the Germans. Irrespective of their minor setbacks and capture, many of the resistance fighters continued to show a strong passion for their fight for liberty. the German Panther tank advances in support of the ground troops. The German soldiers also attack the Allied vehicles. In this case, with a Panzerschreck, the German equivalent of the bazooka anti-tank weapon used by the Allies. As the German advance continues, the Allied artillery, having been brought up from the rear, finally roars into action. Despite the weight of opposition facing the Germans at Falaise, they were still able to cause serious damage to the Allies. On the 20th of August, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps counter-attacked a Polish armoured division in the east. The Polish troops were almost overrun until they were reinforced by a Canadian division and once again, the Germans were repulsed. The Germans also have their own heavy weapons, in the form of a six-barreled Nebelwerfer. The Nebelwerfer was referred to as the main mini by Allied troops during the war, on account of the sound made by the rocket projectiles. While the weapon was not highly accurate, it could fire all six barrels in less than six seconds, laying down a significant amount of firepower in a short period of time. With so many German troops packed into a relatively small area, all trying to pull back to the east, traffic jams were inevitable. The Typhoons and Spitfires took advantage of the situation by destroying the lead vehicles in a column and then strafing the rest with rockets and cannon fire. of aircraft attacks, artillery barrage and ground troops finally forces the Germans to begin a withdrawal. and haste of the retreat, it was not uncommon for some troops to be left behind. Sensing that the Germans are on the back foot once more, the Allied troops advance again and press home their advantage.
finally, some close in action, and hand-to-hand -hand fighting sees the German resolve fail and the Allies emerge victorious. By the 21st of August, Canadian troops from the north had met with US troops from the south, and the remaining Germans in the Falaise area were forced to concede defeat and surrender. This closing of the Falaise Gap and the encirclement of the German armies was the last episode of the Normandy campaign, which had started eight weeks earlier on D-Day. Fortunately, at Classic Fighters, once the battle is over, both Allies and Germans can stand side by side in friendship and can solemnly remember the sacrifices made in France by their forebears.